Hi guys, welcome to Code Decode. So as we all know that now Angular 10 is released on 25th of this month, June. So let's update ourselves to this new version so that we don't miss the best. So without any further delay, let's get started on how to get updated to Angular 10. So till the previous videos, we know that we have coded in Angular 9. So now to make ourselves updated, let's let's update ourselves to Angular 10. So if you are on already a version 8 and you haven't updated to version 9, then you have to do the following command ng update at the rate cli8 and at the rate uh, core 8 so that you will be updated to your at least latest of 8th version and then you can do next and you can update to angular 10 so this is for you i'm not going to do that because i hope i am already on version 9 so let's see on which version i am already so i'll do cmd here and i'll do ng space minus minus version so what does this particular thing says? Let's wait for that. Okay, so it says I'm on version 9 already. And now I want to update my Angular to version 10. So how will I do that particular thing? So let's see that. Now for that, I need ng update at the rate angular slash cli. So let me write it for you. So ng update. Okay, I'll point it for you. It's ng update at the rate angular slash cli. At the rate angular slash cli space. Uh, kindly please do this uh, with me so that you won't miss the train. Next, space angular core next. So the same, we are not only updating this, but we are also updating the core. So at the rate angular slash core and i want to do it to the next so it's it will be the next will be 10th okay now this will take some time so let's wait for that particular thing to happen Okay, it says we are not at the root directory so let's do one thing let me create a particular project for you so for that particular thing i will create a project ng space new my project because i don't have any project here okay because there were no node modules and since there were no node modules it was not able to actually update us so it says do you want routing i say yes it wants css yes i say yes and now it's creating a particular project for me, okay? Okay, so you can see that the packages are now installed successfully. There were some changes which were done because we have created a new project here. Now let's see the version of this particular thing. So it says it's still version 9. Now my part is to modify it to version 10. So let's update it to the next version which will be the 10th version. But I think so let's get into the project. The project name is my project. So cd my and tab. So I'm going into my project name and now I'm going to update it. So it will again take some time it says that the installed local angular version which is 9 is older than the latest released version which is angular 10 so now it is installing the packages for updating our uh, like uh, the package from angular 9 to angular 10 so let's wait for that particular thing to happen Okay, so as you can see now, this particular thing migration is completed. So the log says that the package was installed successfully and we are now installing the things required for Angular 10. So you can see that tsconfig.json was also updated. 
config app dot json all the like uh, configuration files were com migrated completely so as to be made it compatible to angular 10 now if we can see that while executing the migration of core packages it says that the injectable is provided and in uh, and incomplete provider definition migration is done a uh, one important thing here please note it down that module with providers requires a generic type in angular 10 i will cover this in the near uh, video where i'm going to tell you what all changes are done in angular 10 and which can break your code so this is how you can migrate everything from angular 8 or 9 to angular 10 if you have any issues please let me know in the comment section now let's move ahead and see like this is my project i'll show you the project this is the project being created which is angular 10 project now let's see the features what new features have been added to this particular thing so as you can see i have added a particular screenshot for you if, if this is required for your reference purpose it says things are executed properly and uh, the, the same thing we have seen right the angular 10 with uh, generics are provided for module with providers now the angular version is angular 10 now let's see the new features of angular 10 so do you remember whenever we used to create a project what we used to do was ng new let me highlight it so always ng new this is how we are, even now a few minutes back we have created a new project right but with angular 10 you have a very new flag minus minus strict and what does this particular flag do this enabling this flag actually initializes your new project so a project will be created a new project but it will be enhanced with some settings to improve the maintainability it will help you catch the bugs faster allow cli to do advanced optimization on your application which is being created so template will still be created but it will be with some more enhancements which are done in angular 10 so this is the very new thing in angular 10 your ngnu is no more just the legacy project being created but a even optimized app will be created with minus minus strict flag so that was first feature the next feature was angular language services so i have already told you this while i was covering the ex visual code extensions right so whenever you are coding in your component and you want that particular object of the components property to be accessed in templates then you don't have an autocomplete facility there right so if you have something in your template you want to use in your components objects property then you don't have suggestion in your template so suppose you have an employee object defined in a component now employee.name you have initialized in your component you want to use this in a string interpolation in template but you will not get that autocomplete employees property because it is a custom object so basically this angular language service was nothing but a bridge between your component class and your expressions in template so this was earlier now what new feature have been added to this is that auto completion is now removed from html entities like at the rate amp and at the rate alt not everything is removed but only the html auto completion is removed and why is it removed from angular language services because it's outside the core functionality of this service and it is questionable value and its cost performances but the reason why this particular html completion is removed but still these things still remains in angular language services hence it is useful to you the third feature is a new feature is added to compiler so what is the new feature added to compiler is that dependency information and ng content selectors are now added to metadata and these additional metadata the dependency information and ng content selectors are useful tools for uh, for particular thing that is angular language services i have told you earlier right so what will these dependency information will do it will provide you the suggestions required for angular language services to provide your angular dependent directive and components in your library so I'll, I'll tell you in brief what does this mean it's a bit difficult language for you to understand so basically these two dependency information and ng content selector will provide you some dependency information so these object or components dependency information when you have in your particular angular language services then that can be easily embedded in your template so this is nothing but a way to bridge between your component and template in an easier way with these extra metadata appended in the compiler the next feature is 
something done to ngcc so before understanding what is done to ngcc you must understand what is ngcc right so ngcc stands for angular compatibility compiler so what it do is it converts the pre iv module that is what we have in older uh, times of angular from angular 2 to angular 7 or 8 where you don't have iv why enabled automatically so what does ngcc do it actually converts your code which was of old style which was not ivy compatible into ivy compatible code so it processes the code compiled by npm of the older style and produces an equivalent ivy version of the compiled code as if it was compiled with ngtsc and not npm so ngtsc compiles your ivy compatible code and it's a typescript to javascript transpiler that is how it actually ngcc bridges between your npm old npm and to ngtsc so it doesn't make you look as if you have been compiling your old code with a new compiler which is ivy compile compatibility code so that was ngcc a bridge between npm old and ngtsc which is ivy compatible code compiler or transpiler so now what new feature is added to this ngcc now a program based entry point finder has been implemented so a difficult terminology to understand let me explain this to you this finder is nothing but a designed process to process your entry points that are reachable by program defined by psconfig.json file so many a times when you start your application there are multiple entry points those entry points are actually defined by tsconfig.json file so program based entry point finder is implemented in this particular uh, ngcc as a new feature using this app, app option of program based entry point finder you can speed up processing in case where there is a large number of dependencies installed but only a small portion of entry points are actually imported so what can happen I have imported 10 types of uh, angular uh, modules in my application but in the st at the starting point I only want only few of those components or imported modules then what will happen initially everything was loaded but now a new feature is added that only the required of uh, components and modules will be processed and that will be done by a program based entry point finder only those components and modules which are required will be processed and remaining all the dependencies will be ignored so this will increase your processing speed or loading speed also a new check is added to reduce the timeout for retry and retry delay options for async lock in ngcc config file so if you open ngcc config.json file you can see these two things retry attempts and retry delay so the timeout for this is reduced so that it can do it quickly you can always retry on a quick way and third thing the last thing which is done to ngcc is to improve its performance because basically it's just a compiler bridge so you need a better uh, performance so that you can load your application early so initially this is also similar to the uh, program based entry point finders that previously the base path were uh, were act previously what happened was base path was computed whenever the finder instance was instantiated but what it do is whenever it instantiated if it is already base path is already being processed then it will be processed again whenever the finder is in instantiated so to prevent this automatic instantiation and automatic computation of base base path they have made this computation lazy loaded so i have already covered how lazy loading works so they have in like inbuilt they have uh, made this base path loading as lazy loaded so that is why your ngcc compiler will now will work very fast because of lazy loading of base path and whenever the finder is instantiated if base paths are already instantiated then it will not already uh, pro, uh, all, that, that will not already process that particular already processed base path so it will improve your performance here now localization a new feature is added to localization so previously only one file is allowed per locale so if you want to transpile or translate your word into a particular locale like brazil or portuguese or something like that only one translation file was allowed but now there is allowed to have multiple files per locale but 
it's very good thing right for one brazil or portuguese language i can have multiple files where multiple uh, translations are allowed but what will happen if multiple files will have same messages uh, sometimes encoded then which file will be given the preferences so angular people are smart enough they have already resolved this issue with using a first win approach process so this means that the file which is the most important and if they, the, the two messages are same in the two different files then the first file in the order in the application will be given the priority so the you should this means that you should always put the file in order that is if a file is much priority or important than the b1 then a should be kept in the folder structure in the first place and then the b that is why the first win approach happens so you the best part was that multiple files per locale is now allowed now what if everything is done to the route uh, the compilers the localization so how can routing be left right so a new feature is also added to the routing one so as we have discussed there were two things right can activate guard so and can load guard so what these guards used to do they used to prevent the navigation or redirection until a particular current behavior is fixed so what will happen for the router this now uh, the new functionality added to this load guard or activate guard is now it can return a url tree so this is the only thing done in the routing uh, part that is the can load guard the, the method is now actually returning the url tree though it does not affect the preloading thing because uh, still now a, a low can load guard blocks the preloading because if if particular uh, thing is not followed or or uh, actually being satisfied then can load guard will not preload and the guard will not execute as a part of preloading and your particular thing is not redirected and the navigation is cancelled so that is a change done in can load guard a url tree is now being written in but the complete functionality still remains unaffected it's just the return type which is changed here now a new feature is added to angular material if you use the angular material you would be knowing that there is a big date picker range picker uh, uh, in the angular material so now a new date picker uh, range range picker is now available and these new date range picker can be used using the two components so you need to import these two components mat date range input and mat date range picker and using these two particular components you can use the new date range picker which is being implemented with the angular 10 in angular material for you now that was all about the new features but we need to understand that some changes will actually break your code so you have to make sure that before changing or updating to angular 10 if you have something related to which i'm going to cover in next 2 seconds if you have something like that please make sure that you update it to angular 10 compatible code else your complete code will break so the first thing the very important change done to angular 10 is they have introduced typescript 3.9 but not only this they have removed the support for typescript 3.8 or 6 or 7 so if you have code written with typescript 6 7 or 8 or even before uh, 3.6 and not 3.9 then your complete code will break so before installing think that your code will work or not it's not going to be the same if you're using the typescript uh, version less than 3.9 now because the support is being removed next thing tslib is updated to version 2 tslint is now updated to version 6 so modify your code accordingly now the angular package format is no longer including esm5 or fesm5 bundles but this is a good thing it might break your code but it is a good thing because it will these packages are not uh, involved in the npm install now and hence when you when you try to do npm install it will save your time and the installation time will be less now the fifth next big change done here is the support for internet explorer 9 internet explorer 10 and internet mobile explorer is completely deprecated so now if client asks you for giving for giving the support to your angular application to ie9 you can say that the now the angular 10 is no more supporting ie9 or ie10 or ie explorer for mobiles you we cannot provide the support to to those particular uh, ies you can always uh, run your code with chrome it is very nicely supported with chrome now changes done in router which will actually break your code is 
that the resolver right so we whenever you have a path resolver or a root which is being resolved if uh, that particular resolver returns an empty then it will cancel your navigation this was not the case earlier so if it was the resolver is returning empty it will not actually cancel the navigation you will navigate but now it is actually changed if you want to allow the navigation or continue to the uh, redirection to the navigation you will need to update your resolvers which were actually initially using the empty as a return but now you have to return some value for sure otherwise your resolver will not work and you will not be redirected to the new page or to the new path now uh, this this is not going to break your code remember but it is going to harm you in a way see if there were some elements which will throw you in warning initial warning that unknown elements were this was a warning which used to come earlier but now with angular 10 these are no more warnings now they are logged as console dot errors so this is not going to break your code if you have written some code which says it's unknown element then initially it was used to come as warning now it is it will become as uh, console dot errors it will not break your app the important feature that will actually break your code is more if you are using module with providers so initially modular providers were not of generic type they were generic type but it was allowed to omit the the t part that is you are defining defining the uh, way in which the modular providers is instantiated with a type of object previously you can omit that but now with angular 10 you will get this error generic type module providers requires at least one argument and until unless you don't provide that particular argument your code will break so this is this was all about the things you have to remember while mo moving from angular 8 or 9 to angular 10 as these will break your code if you still find any issues while implementing your code from angular 8 or 9 to angular 10 please let me know in the comment section i'll be very happy to help you thank you